Sometimes I get that lonely feeling I say, oh, where I swallow me yeah. He's, his voice is beyond his years, and the wisdom and emotion in it uh, is instantly recognizable to human beings. It was a huge revelation to me because having played with Al Green and having played behind, you know, great soul artists, his voice just automatically resonated with me and have sort of those elements, that spirit, and those tonal qualities. It's not manufactured, it's not like someone trying to emote that, it's, it's, it's real. Not something you can try to do, you either can do it or you can't. I was working on a record and I was asking around, I said, who, who, in, who in our midst here is, you know, has that soul of Richard Manuel, that beautiful, longing, high, heartbreaking voice? And someone mentioned Mike Ferris. I called him up and I said, you know, there's something I'm working on, I wish you'd come and see if you can help me with it. He came over and <laughs> went in the booth there and started singing. I just said, I told the engineer, record everything he does, you know? Because I'm not going to tell him what to do, just record everything he does. I believe the world got sick, y'all. Oh, I do. That's why I have been blue. I do believe one day every living creature going to have these. First time I ever saw him play, my husband Kenny Greenberg and I went down and were the special guests at one of his shouts down at the Station Inn. Here comes Mike in his dark glasses, shuffling on up to the stage. And on the one hand, he's kind of unassuming, and on the other hand, he is a total rock star and he knows it. When you go see a Mike Ferris show, whether it be him by himself on an acoustic guitar, a nine-piece band, you're gonna get probably one of the most powerful, moving shows you've ever seen. It fills you up, and you're like, okay, this is, this, is, this is what real music does. It actually hits all people and affects your spirit just like um, it's affected his. He channels life energy, and he's a magician. He does his hand, and the energy is in the palm of his hand, and he can bring us together. And that is what an artist's job is. I think it's time that we take back some of these things that's been hijacked over the years, uh, like the word gospel. It's good news. I would say he is a gospel singer for the people. And I mean all the people. He's a gospel for people who need another chance. He's there for the prostitutes and the addicts. He's there for the, for the people who are coming from prison and the homeless. He's there for the brokenhearted and the souls in pain. I think a lot of Christian musicians wouldn't claim Mike. I think he's far bigger than that. That's gospel. It belongs to the downtrodden, the people who have had to go up the rough side of the mountain. And it's uh, a lot of pain, and it's a lot of uh, dirt under your feet, man. It's many miles walk. I want our music to be joyful and uh, and uplifting. You know, I want people to, when they walk away, they they feel better. It's it's like this combo platter of joy and faith and mystery and chaos all at the same time. And it's obvious from people who come to see us, uh, all walks of life, man, they get something out of it. And that, that to me tells me that it is truth. It is righteous, it is real. So yeah, my music is gospel music.
think it's important for Mike to not be about Mike, it to be through Mike. The music comes from somewhere else, and I think that spirit, uh, there must be some kind of intelligence behind it because, it, it, you know, occasionally it chooses a vessel that's the perfect delivery system for inspiration. He's got lifetimes of emotion in his voice, and his spirit's probably been here before many times. If I'm the great intelligence behind inspiration and, and the Holy Spirit, I go, that boy can sing. I'm sending him some inspiration so he can deliver it to all these people out there. It was something that was innate in him. He didn't um, earn it, he doesn't deserve it, but he has to be the steward of it. And he's certainly done an amazing job of being the steward of great talent. I mean, I, I, I sing, I sing because I have to sing. I got no choice in it, you know? And I think, I think he feels his call, too. He's been given much, and people who are given much are called to do much. I'm hoping that it's gonna make a difference to somebody. That's, that's the ultimate goal. For the first note that I ever play with Mike, everything is honest. He's laying it all out there on the table. He, it's not about the show for him. And there are those who deliver it uh, in its purest form. And boy, when, when that happens, it's tears are shed, laughter happens, uh, people fall in love, people change their lives, <laughs> find a new line of work. You know, some way of, of, you know, lives become enriched. It's something to be grateful for. His heart, in its purest form, is searching for the truth of how to use that voice. I am think Mike is in the business of figuring out what's in his heart and then offering that up to people. So this album to me is, it's a picture of me post-surrender. But I think even more than Salvation and Lights and, and even and Shout and Cumberland Saints record, this one, it really, it really depicts where I am spiritually now. It's just an extension of, of the message of hope, you know, that so many people need and and that I that, that I need, you know, to continue my journey. That's where it is. It's a it's a true reflection of where I am right now. Again, he's found his voice. He's found the thing that a lot of artists take their whole career trying to find. He's found it. This is, this, is his, this is his sandbox. It's not just taking old gospel songs and reinterpreting them. It's also his method of writing music that's kind of steeped with that influence. It fits in with all the other songs because that's where his, that's where his, uh, his heart is. That's where, that's where his love of music is. What listening to Mike's record to, did to me was it took me back at a, at a time when I used to buy vinyl records all the time. It's like a classic record already, and it's brand new. The songs are amazing. The vocals, everything is absolutely stunning, you know, and it takes you, every song that he's played on me takes me on an incredible journey that I'm just grateful to be on and can't wait to play live. <laughs> Oh, man.
There's something uh, victorious in the arms of a, of a bitter defeat, and that is the willingness to surrender. There's a power that's allowed in. You know, we call it grace. It's an unmerited gift. When grace enters the room, you're receiving an unmerited gift. And with, with, with grace, uh, uh, you can go into the world and be a magician. I, I actually over, overdosed. I mean, I was really defeated. And I realized that, you know, uh, you know, when you come that close to dying, you know, it, it, it's, you're gonna be changed, you know? And so I, I found myself in this pivotal moment where I had surrendered and I wanted to know what my place is in the world, where, where I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to be doing. The thing that's kept me alive uh, uh, is to uh, find a passion. I've got to have a reason to get up in the morning. I need a reason to get up in the morning, and it's got to be bigger than a person. It can't be because I love you. And uh, this is where music comes in. Just out of the blue, I, I, I woke up one morning and I, wrote a song. And I love my brother He could use a little mercy now From that point, it just started pouring out and it was the great substitute for the drugs and alcohol because it was, and it was positive and it was healing, you know. He's uh, been reborn in a way uh, from this music. This music has given him a purpose and it's obvious when you listen to him, you, you, you can't fake what he's doing. Through the arms of defeat, Mike Ferris has done a victory lap. It's a paradox, a spiritual paradox. He has taken so much of that addictive fuel and put it in just the right place. But it's channeled through this righteous voice and delivery and song sensibility. I really like to be around people who are in some form of recovery. There's a sense of humor that comes from having been out of the frying pan and in the fire. To get comfortable enough with yourself to let go of the things that were killing you takes self-acceptance. When you, when you go into a recovery meeting, people are vulnerable. And through that vulnerability, uh, they're easily encouraged by people who have faith. So you can see spirit moving in that room. create intimacy and you create uh, an opportunity to connect with people in a real way. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to connect. I just think Mike's mission to me is to better the life of people through his own journey. And to let people know that it's okay if you took his kind of journey, there is a way out. Music does transform people's lives. Certainly Ray Charles transformed lives. The Beatles transformed lives. Bob Dylan, you know, yes, music transformed lives. It definitely transformed me. When you're looking at a kid that found music through a homeless school, and I can tell you from the first few notes on an old upright piano, it took me from a point of destitute to all of a sudden I had hope in life. I had hope. Music is, man. Music is, uh, is a 
a, a powerful, powerful force. And I think that's what we, a lot of us do, you know, we make, we, we take the things that were meant to destroy us and we turn it around and turn that into something positive. When I first heard Mike in the Cheetah Wheelies, he sang completely different, way different. The tone of his voice was different. And then all of a sudden, he was transformed. And it can only be a gift to be a vehicle in which to share his journey. He takes people who are, who are hurting and, and who are broken and who think they're alone. Uh, and through just s the sound of his voice, he lets them know that they're not. That's magic. Time.